Hello and welcome. This is a video for Splint Design and InLab Software 22. Now when you open up the Splint application in the InLab software, uh, two ways that you'll be able to tell that you're in the Splint application is it will say InLab Splint in the top right corner, but as well too, if you were working off of an intraoral scan, it'll now change from color into kind of that stone uh, yellow color. Um, now when you first come into the system, you're in the define insertion access step. However, there's two steps ahead of that, set model access and prepare model that it did skip. Now it did skip this because it technically already took care of this in the previous software, right, known as the CAD software. Um, but again, this allows you to go back and make any final tweaks should you need to. Um, and if you have already done it in the CIRIC software or the InLab software, it is not required to do it again. Again, it's just a way to double check your work. So with the prepare model phase, you have the ability to add smooth or remove material from the model. But the first step that we do have to take care of is define insertion axis. So this is where we are looking at undercuts of the current insertion path. So when you look at that arrow that's kind of in the center of the actual arch itself, it's kind of at a 90 degree angle when you actually look at it. So that's insinuating that, you know, post manufacturing, we insert this from the occlusal surface at kind of that 90 degrees. So we can see on the lower left a legend with the values of those undercuts. However, we do want to be able to change this insertion path. So often when we're inserting something like a splint or night guard, we insert it slightly more from the posterior region and then bring it into the anteriors. So we minimize undercuts that way. So we want the arrow to reflect that same sort of insertion path. So I'm just basically using either the arrow on the center of that model or um, that target as well too that you saw on the lower left. Now, once you've finalized your insertion path, you are then now going into what's known as the blockout stage, where the software will block out any undercut that it just visualized in the previous step. So at this point in time, we're able to add more blockout, smooth blockout, or even remove blockout completely uh, to the actual case itself. Um, but it's essentially blocking out any undercut that it visualized in that previous step. Uh, so when we get to the blockout stage, uh, initially we cannot see where the blockout, uh, or sorry, where the undercuts were present, but we do see where the blockout has now been placed. So there will be the option to then turn on what's known as the reline tool to be able to ensure that we can see the actual undercuts below. So when we kind of look around here, you can see that we see the blue of the blockout material itself. Um, and so if we want to be able to actually see below to where the undercuts actually were, if I turn on this reline option, here we can see that color mapping below. So at this point in time, if I want to actually add maybe a thicker um, reline, a thicker blockout area, right now the height is set to 0.5 millimeters on the right hand side there, but I can create something like a thicker blockout in areas of maybe where a diastema is concerned. So let's say for example, between my canine and my premolar, there's a slight gap there for this particular patient. So I can create just a slightly thicker blockout in a more controlled fashion to be able to ensure that the actual splint doesn't engage with that area. So then here I'm able to kind of look around and see any areas that I might need to add additional uh, uh, block of material to. Now what's nice with the add tool, I can set a max wax thickness. So it doesn't matter how many times I go over with my cursor, it won't go over the amount that I've set it to. So in this case, 0.4 millimeters. So it kind of gives that comfort of knowing that you're not adding too much block out material. Now sometimes people will remove block out entirely to engage with the undercuts for retention, completely up to you as the operator but that is an option for you should you want to expose the undercuts. So when we move into the design phase, uh, once we're happy with the block out, a couple things we are able to do, if we haven't taken our bite with an open bite, uh, with our intraoral scanner or our tabletop scanner, we are able to utilize the open jaw um, tool there on the right hand side, where we can open up on the hinge articulator the patient's jaw. So in this case, let's say I type in here 2.5 millimeters on a hinge articulator, it's gonna open that patient's bite up by 2.5 millimeters. So then with the create splint option, I can just remove under display objects my opposing arch there. And then there's create by line or create by plane. I personally like create by line a little bit better. It defines the borders a little bit more, you know, custom to the patient's uh, splint. However, with the create by plane, plane, there's an option to obviously get just a quick initial proposal of the border. So basically anything below that line is going to be outside the scope of the actual uh, splint where anything above that is going to be part of the splint. So I've switched here to create by line instead. So I'm now just using my cursor. I double click with my left cursor, single click to kind of tag down that line with my left cursor. If I ever want to go back a step, I can right click and that will go back one mouse click. 
And then basically here, I'm able to kind of, you know, go to the edges of where I see fit for the actual splint itself. So, you know, this with the create by line, you definitely have more customation available to you. So for example, on the lingual aspect, if I wanted it to go, you know, a couple millimeters below that gum line area, I can, right? And it's very easy to do so with the create by line. So that's why I tend to use it the most as opposed to create by plane. But there are some users who like to use create by plane to just quickly get an initial proposal and then have the ability to go back and edit if they need to because you are always able to edit the border after you've selected it initially um, so you're never locked into what you've proposed here initially for the borders of your splint but it's definitely a nice clean workflow really easy to get your initial proposal so once we have the initial proposal, it'll show up in green and the uh, yellow border will identify where the edge of the actual splint then sit. And at that point in time, we do have the ability to edit the line um, at this point still, right? So if there's any areas where, you know, maybe it didn't capture our clicks very well or we just want to clean up the borders a little bit, we have the ability to do so in this stage. Um, so it's a really easy way to do so. Now on the right hand side, you're going to see several parameters. You'll see the thickness, the spacer, the size and plane. So the thickness is referring to as a minimum, how thick is the actual splint going to be? The spacer is how tight or loose will it be? So the space basically between the splint itself and the uh, model or the ridge. Uh, and then the size and plane is referring to if we're going to have a kind of round transition, is it going to give a more broad plane of occlusion or kind of a more flatter, narrower, uh, narrower um, biting surface? Okay, so we do have the ability to make it a little less narrow if we see fit. So if you do prefer kind of that flat plane of occlusion on the biting surface, you want to ensure that you have plane occlusion checked off. Otherwise, if you don't have that checked off, it kind of follows the anatomy of the teeth, right? So it'll kind of follow the contour of the actual teeth themselves. So if we want plane occlusion turned on, uh, you can, can do so there. Now create round transition, that kind of creates a rounder edge of the actual um, finishing line itself. So just a little bit nicer for the patient's uh, inner lip and cheek. So once you have the parameter set, again, identifying if you want to have that flat biting surface or anything like that, you just want to then hit apply to apply those parameters, uh, that thickness, that spacer, etc., to the actual night guard itself. So once we move forward into the finalized stage of uh, the splint software, a couple things that we can do uh, to ensure that we have the occlusion dialed in, which is kind of nice. So once we select the finalized stage, we'll be able to use maybe the virtual articulator if we see fit uh, to then grind in the occlusion. So here we've got the finalized stage is now the uh, splint is now in blue. So if I come to the tools that are available to me here, I'll be able to um, essentially see that there is the open jaw again. So maybe I forgot to open the jaw earlier, so I can do that now. But with display context, you can actually see where the patient's currently biting. So what I've just selected here is the articulation grinding area, where basically it uses the virtual articulator determined in the CAD software, uh, where it's basically virtually articulating, uh, articulating all the dynamic function. So at this point in time, it's ground in the occlusion. But let's say I want a little bit more canine guidance, maybe a little bit more um, contact in the anterior region, I can highlight basically canine to canine area with the add ungrindable area that's currently selected right now. I can just highlight that and then hit apply and it's going to basically just soften up those contacts for me and ensure that I've got um, a thorough and, and equal bite throughout the actual splint itself. So once that's completed, um, sometimes I like to remove the display contact so I can kind of see a little bit more visually where my uh, indentations are for the occlusion. Um, but at this point in time, I do also have the functionality to, um, you know, maybe avoid doing the articulation grinding. Some people like to manually do this post manufacturing in the printer or mill. That's also acceptable too. It's really just operator preference. Um, so with the form tool, you have the ability, just like you do with you know the form tool and edit model and things like that you can add smooth or remove material from the actual splint itself um, now with the form tools there's also the consider jaw option which is basically considering it on a hinge articulator and grinding in the occlusion that way so sometimes people will do that as well too um, so this is basically a way to you know quickly kind of dial in the occlusion post uh, manufacturing so that it makes it a little bit easier when you are finishing it um, at you know the chair uh, while the patient's having it inserted into their mouth. Now there is a text label option as well too, where you are able to add the patient's name um, or maybe sometimes just initials that you'll grind in, uh, grind off after manufacturing just to keep track of who's, is, uh, who's splint in the actual printer itself. So you have that functionality as well if you need to. 
So at this point in time, I've turned off display contacts. And I'm gonna use the form tool. And I'm just gonna soften up these contacts a little bit with the smooth tool. So basically just softening this up here, smoothing this out. And then I'm able to edit as needed. So then the final step when it comes to processing, of course, uh, or, or finalizing for manufacturing, is you want to export this case. So when it comes to exporting, uh, you do have the ability in InLab 22 to export to manufacturing. Uh, so that would be in something like the Prime Print or the MCX5 if you're milling. Uh, and this allows you to, of course, direct it to the InLab Cam software. Uh, the other option is, of course, as an STL. So here you can see I've done it as a CAM file or export to STL if you're using a third-party system. So with export to STL, you just want to make sure you identify where you want it saved, uh, so the path of where you want it saved to be able to find it for your CAM software uh, according to which system you're using, and then of course the file name, just identifying the name that you wish to save it as. Uh, so this has been the InLab Splint application. Uh, stay tuned for more videos and thank you for your time.